yesterday I went for a run and I did not put my contact in. So I was wearing my, I, I usually have monovision. <clears throat> I wear one contact for distance and then one eye for reading. And yesterday I didn't put my contact in for when going for a run in, and I wore prescription sunglasses and I couldn't believe how clearly I could see things. I had two eyes that were for distance and I could see the leaves and the details and the mountains and everything was much sharper in focus. How often do we see things clearly? How often do we see ourselves clearly? We're seeing differently, I think, the last two and a half years or so since the pandemic started. We're seeing things differently. Our priorities have changed. Life has changed. Our relationships have changed. Our jobs. We have different perspectives. Maybe we're acknowledging things that we didn't see before. Maybe we're running away from things that we don't like or towards something that we do want in our lives. We have the great resignation that was last year, right? This year is the quiet quitting. I don't know what's next, but what is ours to do? What is ours to be is the question in this time. And as we're trying to get back to some sense of normal, Maybe we're seeing our worlds in a new light with more clarity. We're working on this book, Grace Trail, by Ann Barry Jolis. And we're in week five of a seven week series. We are, we're doing our fall program, which is our small group. We have about 70 of you meeting in small groups throughout the week and discussing it. And I've heard wonderful things about the discussions that the groups are having. So I'm so glad that you're able to meet with people. And I hope if you're not in a group that you're still working on it on your own. We have a grace trail out here you can walk. You can walk it in your mind virtually. But it really helps you to have a different perspective, to kind of shift your thinking. And Jola says, compassion, courage, and honesty are often necessary for acceptance. Acceptance we're on today is the acceptance Sometimes the hardest things to accept are those things about ourselves. Sometimes those are the hardest things. Accepting things about ourselves. A, few, a couple months ago, Richard Rohr in his blog did a story about, or a post about the parable from the gospel according to Matthew called the weeds and the wheat. And in that parable, there's a sower that sows only good seed in his field. And at the, in the nighttime, it says that an enemy comes and plants weeds alongside the wheat. In the morning, or as the seeds start to sprout, the laborers notice and they say to the master, there are weeds with the wheat. What should we do? Should we pull the weeds out? And he says, no. Let the weeds and the wheat grow together. This is so symbolic of our lives because often we have the wheat, the, the, the parts of ourselves that we like, and the weeds, the parts of ourselves that we want to pull out and get rid of. But we can't really do that. So what do we often do is we push them down. We pretend they're not there. We, we think, well, they just don't exist if we don't see them. But the parable, parable says to let them grow together. It's part of our wholeness, our good qualities and our not so good qualities. That doesn't mean it's okay or that we say it's okay to be violent or selfish or evil or stubborn, but to have compassion for ourselves. That we have weeds growing right alongside our wheat. We have character flaws right alongside our, our, our good qualities. We're all a mixed bag. And it takes courage to accept ourselves as we are, to accept that wholeness. We don't want to see those parts of ourselves. But true love, divine love, loves the whole. Spirit loves the whole of us. Many of you have 
all of us have probably loved someone. They weren't perfect. They had weeds too. We love the whole person, not just the good parts. A lot of times in ourselves, we don't want to face it. We don't want to shine a light on those flaws. We don't want anyone to see that part of ourselves. A couple of weeks ago, Martha Creek was here, and she did a workshop in the afternoon. And she handed out this, this handout. It's on self-differentiation. And on the, on the left-hand side is a list of qualities that maybe we wouldn't like. Quickly offended, reactive, easily provoked, demanding, willful, stubborn, Think in black and white. Anybody, all of those, anybody, any of those all the time? <laughs> oh, somebody raise their hand. Uptight, competitive, vague. In the workshop sheet, Martha had us circle the ones that we see in ourselves. Of course, we, we don't want to admit this to anybody. On the right-hand side, there's a column of qualities that we would love to see ourselves as. Self-managing, responsive, open, resilient, flexible, relaxed, at ease. Anybody see those in themselves all the time? <laughs> <laughs> what I loved about this workshop is that Martha said, add the word I am reactive at times. <laughs> at times, I am responsive. At times, I am reactive. At times, I am relaxed. And at times, I am uptight. See, this is our wholeness. This is the all of us. But we don't want to accept any of the qualities on the left-hand side. We don't want to admit that to anyone. We don't want anyone to see that part of ourselves. So we push it down, and it becomes our shadow selves. We don't have to be perfect. We're not here. We haven't arrived, but we hopefully are on our way. We want to recognize and acknowledge our wholeness, acknowledge all of us and all of each other, and love that knowing that we're all human, we all make mistakes, we all mess up at times. And we're all wonderful at times and kind and loving and joyful at times. It requires us to shine a light on ourselves. It's easier to shine a light on others and see their faults than to see it in ourselves. But if you spot it, you got it. <laughs> you got it. We all have all of those qualities at times, as much as we don't want to admit it. We need to recognize that we're human, and we express from that part of ourselves at times. Angela says, to acknowledge the parts of our lives that are difficult and messy, as well as those that are good, means we are acknowledging the full spectrum, the good, the bad, and the ugly. Welcome to adulthood. <laughs> it's not easy to do that. Last week, I talked about one of my fears being getting older and being irrelevant and invisible. And this week, I got to experience that in a, in a different kind of way than I was expecting. I did my sneak peek this week outside. And I wanted to show the trees changing, the leaves, the colors changing, and how we accept those kind of changes. We accept the season changes, but we don't accept changes in ourselves. And I got done with the sneak peek, one take, and I looked at it on my phone, and it's real little. You know, I'm like, oh, I don't really like how I look in that, but oh, it's OK. This is about acceptance. So I'm just going to send it to Kevin, and he's going to He's going to do his thing, and you know we'll post it. The next day, I'm, I'm embarrassed to say this. I looked at it on my laptop. <laughs> and the light was shining at an angle that was not flattering at all. <laughs> and I started crying. 
I hadn't seen myself that way. I hadn't seen myself with the angle of the sun to catch just the right amount of wrinkles. <laughs> and I, I ha really hadn't, I didn't know I looked that old. I was like, I, I went to Kevin. I said, I hope you touched up the video before you sent it. <laughs> it's like, he's like, no. And I, the tears were just pouring down. We often don't see things until we shine a light on them, until we shine a light from a certain angle even. I knew that I was, my reaction to this was out of proportion. And Kevin said, you wanted me to take it down? I can take the video down right now. Nobody will see it. It was right before the update went out. And I said, no, it's about acceptance. <laughs> <laughs> I have to accept this. I don't even want to acknowledge it. I don't even like to acknowledge my birthday. My birthday was last month, and I, Jeannie wanted to come up with the kids and do a thing on up here, and I said, no, 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 no. Don't acknowledge the birthday. Don't acknowledge that year. I'm 63. I turned 63 last year, <laughs> last year, last month. <laughs> we have to accept ourselves the way we are. It's, you know, it's not, not, much, not much we can change about that, shy of surgery. So, <laughs> but Ann Jolis says, he, she says on page 100, it is often what is out of our control that demands our acknowledgement. It demands our acknowledgement. It demands, see me, see this, see this part of yourself. We have to acknowledge things before we can accept them. If we don't even acknowledge them, we can never accept them. We have to at least say, OK, that's present. It's there. We don't have to like it, but we have to acknowledge it. Self-acceptance helps control our emotions. It helps us be less reactive. There's lots of benefits to having self-acceptance. It helps you forgive yourself. It helps, you give, it helps give you more self-confidence. It helps you see yourself in a whole new light, even if the light's coming from a bad angle. <laughs> see this side. We have to love ourselves first, accept ourselves first, before we can love or accept anyone else. If I wanted to give you $100 and I reached into my pocket and I didn't have $100, I can't give it to you. The same is true with love. The same is true with acceptance, with acknowledgement. We have to have it before we can give it. And then once we have it and we recognize it, then we're giving from the flow, the overflow. Because we can realize that we are worthy of this self-love. We are worthy of self-acceptance. We, each of us, are worthy of this. We are here as divine, by divine appointment. We are here not as an accident. We are here on purpose. We have to give that to ourselves. Give it to ourselves. It's a gift. Sometimes we need to look for it. Angela says on page 116, to live your life fully, you need to encourage yourself to look beyond the appearance of things on the surface and then go deeper. We usually see what we want to see and not what is actually in front of us. We see what we want to see. We need to shine the light on the whole. On Friday, Kevin and I went to a show called Theater of the Mind. Has anyone been? Theater of the Mind, no. It was, so it's David Byrne, who was in Talking Heads, and he's super creative and out there. And he's the creator of this. And we, you go into a room as you're waiting. It's, it's only, they only allow like 15 or 16 people to go through it at a time. And it's every 15 minutes, there's a new group of people. And you go into a room to wait, and on the wall are these pictures, these big portraits of people. But as you 
look at them from different angles, you see different faces. It's called lenticular photos. Our photographers might know about that. Lenticular, there were three different images and it just, just depends on where you were looking at it from what angle, what you would see. They were really fascinating. And it was the cast from the show. And it, on the wall, and I wish I could have taken a picture of it, but they made us turn up, they made us not bring, they, we didn't let us bring our cameras in. So <laughs> I couldn't take a picture of it, but it talked about us being malleable. And when you think about malleable, it means to be bent and, and, and shaped by pressure with a hammer. Now we can be bent and shaped by pressure, outside pressure, but we can also look as, at malleable as being flexible and being willing to change. Allow ourselves to grow, to evolve, be malleable. And the show was fascinating because once we got in to the, out of the waiting room, it's a progression from a person's life backwards. And you see how they form different beliefs, how they form different opinions based on what was going on in their life. But it also really stressed that our senses are not always accurate that our brain will fill in the gaps, that we don't always see what's real. Sometimes it's an illusion. Our senses can be fooled. Just as we can be fooled if we're not looking at the whole picture, if we're not accepting all of us, we create illusions that aren't there. And they talk about how you can't change the past, but you can always change your story. You can always change your story going forward. The pat looking at the past helps us connect the dots to see how we got where we are, but we can change the story going forward. So what story in your life needs to be changed? What story is not playing out the way you would like it to play out? What's it stopping you from accepting yourself as you are? What needs your acknowledgement? What are you not willing to even look at? I would encourage you this week to try one of the switchbacks. They're on page 116 and 117. And if you don't have the book, it's, it's about being reflective. It's about looking at your life. It's maybe taking a warm bath and being reflective meditating, going for a walk by yourself. This, 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 this acceptance piece of the grace trail is all about being quiet and being still and allowing yourself to really look at yourself, really look at your life. We use the language, she says the language of acceptance is aware, awake, acknowledge, accept, alive. We're alive when we do that. I love that the serenity prayer says, Lord, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change. There's serenity in accepting the things we can't change. There's a serenity, there's a peace, peacefulness, there's a calm, there's a feeling of being untroubled. When we accept those things we cannot change, and there's lots of things we can't change. Anything outside of us, we can't change. We can only change what's in here. Who wouldn't want that, that kind of serenity? This week in my spiritual directions program, one of my classes, they had us listen three times. I'm not going to read it three times. I'm going to read it just once. But it's a story from Thomas Merton, who was a Trappist monk and an author of 50 books within 27 years. And he, um, he describes his own awakening. So I want to read it to you because it's, it gave me, I got goosebumps when I heard it, when I had it read to me in class. I, I had tears of joy. 
And I just felt like shivering all over. So I invite you to just listen for a moment as I read this description of Thomas Merton's awakening. In Louisville, at the corner of 4th and Walnut, in the center of the shopping district, I was suddenly overwhelmed with the realization that I loved all those people, that they were mine and I theirs, that we could not be alien to one another even though we were total strangers. It was like waking from a dream of separateness, of spurious self-isolation in a special world, the world of renunciation and supposed holiness. The whole illusion of a separate holy existence is a dream. This sense of liberation from an illusory difference was such a relief and such a joy to me that I almost laughed out loud. And I suppose my happiness could have taken form in the words, thank God. Thank God that I am like other men, that I am only a man among others. It's a glorious destiny to be a member of the human race, though it is a race dedicated to many absurdities and one which makes many terrible mistakes. A member of the human race. To think that such a commonplace realization should suddenly seem like news that one holds the winning ticket in a cosmic sweepstake. And if only everybody could realize this, but it cannot be explained. There is no way of telling people that they are all walking around shining like the sun. They are not they, but my own self. They are no strangers. Then it was as if I suddenly saw the secret beauty of their hearts, the depth of their hearts where neither sin nor desire nor self-knowledge can reach, the core of their reality. If only they could all see themselves as they really are. If only we could see each other that way all the time. There would be no more war, no more hatred, no more cruelty, no more greed. I suppose the big problem would be that we would fall down and worship each other. <laughs> fall down and worship each other. Accept ourselves acknowledge our wholeness and worship each other. That's grace. That's grace. Peace be with you. Namaste.